All right, hopefully today's video I can use to give kind of a brief overview of just a couple things that I think are really gonna help a lot of you, especially with movement. Um, not sure exactly if that'll be the focus, but we'll find out if that's gonna be the main focus of the video. But I do believe that movement is what makes or breaks a lot of people in this game. Um, I think it's the biggest difference maker. Like sure, you know, you can be plat and you can know combos, but the thing is you can be diamond and you can know combos, you can know all that good stuff. You can know every read in the book, but if you don't move well, if you don't feel like you're moving fluidly, then none of that really matters. I think movement, especially in a fighting game, is possibly the biggest thing. Any game where you have the ability um, to change how fast you're moving, right? To really uh, toggle between crouching, sprinting. That's why certain like FPSs, that's really important. Positioning. Um, across the board, really, it's just such an important thing. But with fighting games, movement's literally everything. There's no room for error when it comes to movement because uh, the smallest change in movement can end up deciding whether or not you lose the game or whether or not you get the gimp uh, and that's you know that's not really uh, something you want to have you don't really want to be losing the game because you decide to make some silly movement error because you just simply didn't know where to go or how to move now also with that being said how can we easily improve this well the easiest thing to do is uh, play a character like Artemis. Artemis is extremely, extremely fast. I'm playing the speed stance on her, so I have nine speed actually. Um, the faster the legend is, the easier time you're gonna have to be moving. With that being said, you're gonna have to have a lot more control. I think a lot of the times, something I have an issue with, um, when I play like nine speed, it almost feels unnecessary because the legend is so fast. And sometimes I feel like I, uh, I end up moving way farther than I intend. So really, if you're going to be playing a character that's super quick, that's great, but you're going to need to learn how to control the speed. And a lot of the times, um, I think that's minimizing the dashing, right? The walking speed's already going to be faster than uh, other legends simply because, right, the higher speed, the higher the number, the faster you're going to be. So the walking speed already is going to be quick. A lot of people like to dash around and stuff a ton. Try, and this kind of segues into my next point, try and simply just walk into them more. Okay, well, what do I mean by walking at them? Literally just closing the gap, slowly moving in. None of this, none of this dashing around stuff. That's extra added movement. Sometimes that can be good. It can maybe confuse the opponent as to what you're going to do. But I don't think necessarily having all that dashing is worth it, at least until you've built some momentum. When you're trying to establish dominance and like positioning and uh, just figure out how to approach your like opponent, the best thing you can do in my mind is simply just take the time move a little slow and just inch your way forward you don't need to ever really throw anything out now sometimes there's moves for example artemis side sig you can just kind of throw out dash in just test the waters right see where they're gonna go see what it makes them do but other than that especially when i'm playing scythe i love just kind of like okay okay just move in on them or move back even right like right there there's no dash needed the dash would have probably been too much there uh, it just wouldn't have made sense but it allows you to microspace more and and i don't even want to say microspace it allows you to close that gap easier and space uh, more precisely right instead of having to measure okay how far is this dash going to send me am i going to go too far am i going to um, get too close you're going to be able to just manage your range better and that goes back to the fact that having a high speed legend like artemis because that walk speed is higher well now the uh yeah the ability to just like move in and out you're going to be able to do it quicker and that's really really nice another thing and it's kind of hard to show this because a lot of the times you know there's not really many offstage interactions maybe maybe i'll get one to really really show but a lot of the times when people are on wall I think there's two options, or I should say, let's start with when people are coming back to stage. There's really two trains of thought, right? And they go from, okay, I'm coming back to stage, coming back to stage, let me go up, or let me get back to stage, right? And then there's the other that's like, okay, I'm here, I'm here, well, I have to go to wall. And I would say, I would say, and this is literally me ballparking, um, so let's not give a percentage, but I'll just say most of the people I play nowadays, I feel like if you just hold the edge of the stage when they're coming back, they're gonna go wall most of the time. And you know what that means? Like, you know where they're gonna go to wall, so that just sets up for an easy edge guard, right? Because once you dodge into the wall, you have no more dodge. The dodge is canceled. So it just makes it uh, really, really easy. And also, if you, you have a lead like I do right here, there's no harm in trying. Because that at that point, it kind of puts the opponent in a panic. Because what else could they possibly do there? There's not really a... 
there's not really a lot you can do, or at least that's like a better option, because at that point also, you're continuing pressure, which is always great, and you're also just pushing for a gimp. And on the other side, right, if you are on the wall and someone's trying to edge guard you, a lot of the times people like to do this little hop off wall and people don't always cover the wall. You can react, It's and I understand not everyone has insane reaction time, and I also understand I'm annoying this dusk, but a lot of the times when you're on the wall, it doesn't take much to react, right? If someone's gonna go for a ground pound, you already know that they're gonna do something. It's like, okay, what can they possibly do that's gonna hit me on the wall if they go for it? Now, it can be harder uh, depending on certain characters or maybe if they try like a creative option um, or a weapon throw, it, it becomes a lot harder. But let's say like sword ground pound, right? Or gauntlet ground pound. You can hold wall till they come and then you go and then you can find your spot and you can go back to stage. I think that's a big thing even I do because it's like you're anticipating them covering the wall. But instead of anticipating them covering the wall, just hold wall until um, until they actually do it. Or, you know, just time your spot. A lot of the times, getting back with weapon throws, unfortunately, in my mind, is a pretty feasible option. Uh, wow, that actually killed. But yeah, like a lot of times, people end up doing weapon throws like that, and that'll help cover them getting back to stage. Um, I would say another thing is, the best type of playstyle in general, really, and, and maybe this is... Maybe this is generalizing too much, but the type, I'll just say the type of style I do and what I generally find success with, at least when I'm playing well with it, is a bit of like a push and pull style. I think a lot of the times that's what people want to aim for. And what I mean by that is sometimes, right, especially at the beginnings and when you're trying to really establish like your position, okay, what do I need to do? You're going to be, uh, I guess you're going to try and be like pulling them more, like bringing them to you, trying to get them to engage on their own without you doing anything, right? You want them to come to you. But with that being said, you also don't wanna be passive, right? You don't wanna just be not doing anything because then it's kind of like a sign of weakness. You don't wanna look scared. And I know that might sound a little extreme, like it's Brawlhalla, it's a video game, but it is. A lot of times it's like, oh, okay, this guy's not gonna approach me. They might be afraid. And that could be a difference maker, especially if you're playing like a heavy hitting character that can be really problematic, especially like, like Taros, for example, right? you gotta establish that you're comfortable and even if you're not you have to put on that like facade that you are otherwise you're gonna give them space and it's gonna be really easy for them to get damage and they're not gonna be afraid to move into you and go for like a stomp stare or just some sort of big kill move that'll uh, that'll really knock you out early on the other hand though right once you establish said dominance once you establish the position and you really start to get some momentum in the ball rolling that's when you pick it up. You're not in any rush. And once you establish the dominance, once you establish the positioning, then you can get the ball rolling and really pick it up. And at that point, the opponent, especially if they're really far down, they're gonna be so scared to actually do anything. And they're more likely to make mistakes. So be creative, try stuff, and just don't let up on the pressure. But don't be stupid either. I kind of did a video similar to this, except it was about you know how to get out of gold. And it wasn't necessarily like a super fleshed out guide. Um, right now, I'm just going through like a lot with uh, just life things, you know, nothing nothing bad, of course, but I am about to graduate college. I am looking to move into an apartment. So, you know, things like that have been taking up my time. Um, and I know like after I graduate, uh, I've said this before and I'll make again a more fleshed out announcement, but I plan on doing this um, like as my job post graduation and such. So I'll have a lot more time after, but I still don't want to leave you guys without content. So. A movement guide is honestly something I would like to do eventually and you know I'll be on the lookout for content and such so what I'll probably do is a lot of the points I glazed over today right and I didn't really get to show anything great but I still think that hopefully most of you can take at least a couple of the things I said and really apply them um, it's a lot harder when there's not active examples I understand that but when I do make a movement guide I would a hundred percent make it much more obvious as to what I'm talking about but I think uh, more than anything, I wanted to get content out there for you guys, and you know what, I figured, eh, I think people are always asking for movement guides, or a movement guide is a pretty popular, um, it's a pretty popular one, so, I, uh, yeah, I mean, I was like, well, why not, why not just make something, put it out there, hopefully people can take something away from it, and at a later date, I'll really provide, like, a super fleshed out one, and I gotta say, I mean, if you're looking to move and schmove, I think, the higher the speed of a legend, definitely, like, the better it's going to make you. I think that is easily 
um, the easiest way to like force yourself into improving. And also playing weapons like Scythe, like Gauntlets, things that are like more string stringy and like really can allow for aggressive play and aren't super, um, I mean, what's the word? Like risk, there's not a lot of risk on some of the moves, right? I mean, even guns, you can look at them. Guns are a great weapon that, uh, you know, emphasize like that push pull mentality, I would say, because with guns, once you get the ball rolling, I mean, you look at Cody, right? Cody, Boomy, they get the ball rolling. They are going crazy. They are doing everything. They're hitting every read, but they, a lot of the times, at least when, you know, I'll speak for Cody in this case, because I guess, you know, he's my teammate. A lot of the times, I think he's doing a lot of pokes. He's playing it patiently until he knows he's started to really able like to pick up the pace. But these fast legends, they force you to be precise. They force you to move well. And also spring championship is coming up this weekend. I'm aiming for another video Sunday, but who knows? I'm not gonna promise anything, but I will promise that once I do graduate and once I do move, I will be on the content grind for sure, especially streaming. So make sure you're following my Twitch, twitch.tv slash It'll be in the description like it always is, but I hope you guys have a good day. Peace out.